Recently, Cloudflare made headlines with its 1.1.1 service. It claims to speed up your internet connection while adding security. But does it really work? How does it work and why? To answer these questions, let's look at what the service really is. In essence, 1.1.1.1 is an alternative DNS server, so let's break it down. A DNS server, in layman's terms, is the phone book of the internet. It's a table of all the domain names that you can remember, like example.com and their corresponding IP addresses. DNS servers come in many different forms, from ones run by nonprofits, corporations, and commonly, internet service providers. Cloudflare's 1.1.1.1 is an alternative because, for the most part, people tend to use the DNS server that comes by default with their internet service. More technically speaking, when you connect your phone or computer to a network, say a coffee shop's Wi-Fi, your university, the network at your office, or even at your home, a server on that network usually gives it an IP address along with some settings. One of these settings is which DNS server to use. The default configuration for most phones and computers is to use whatever the server gives it, but these values can be overridden. By overriding the default with an alternative like Cloudflare's 1.1.1.1, you are choosing to use that DNS server or internet address book over the one provided by the network. There are many alternative DNS servers than what your ISP may provide, like OpenDNS's 208.67.222.222 or Google's 8.8.8.8. But what are the advantages to using an alternative DNS server? In the case of Cloudflare's 1.1.1.1, they are billing it as both faster and more secure. Okay, so how does this make your internet connection faster? As an example, when you go to a web page, say example.com, your computer needs to look up the IP address associated with that page before it can ask the server hosting that web page for its content. The process of looking up the IP address is made possible by querying DNS. In essence, your computer must go to its DNS server and say, hey, what's the IP address of example.com, before it can go to example.com and say, hey, example.com, give me your web page. This lookup process takes time. The longer you have to wait for the DNS server to get back to you with this information, the longer it will take before you can even ask the domain for its web page. Typically, this is pretty quick because for sites that you frequent, your computer will cache or remember their IP address. But for domains that your computer does not know the IP address of, it'll have to go up to the cloud, ask the DNS server, and wait for a response. What makes it even more challenging is that not all DNS servers, or internet address books if you will, know all of the answers. Sometimes your computer will say, hey, what's the IP address of this esoteric domain? And the DNS server will be like, hmm, that's not in my listing. Hang on a sec, I'll ask someone up the food chain. And then it will ask the next DNS server if it has the IP address of the esoteric domain you're looking for. And if that server does not have the address, it too will need to ask another DNS server. And so on and so on. Eventually, if you are asking for domains so unique that none of the lower level DNS servers have it in their cache, they will have to ask one of the root servers. So the root name servers, or root DNS servers, are a set of 13 DNS servers strategically located around the world that maintain a list of all domains on the internet. Without these, in essence, there is no internet that we know of today. It's also the reason why when you register a new domain or make a DNS change, it'll be some time before it takes effect. That's because the new domain gets added into the root server's databases, and they have to not only synchronize with each other, but they need to disseminate this new data down to the lower level servers as well. You might be asking yourself now, why don't we all just ask the 13 root servers? But that would not be super efficient, and it's a topic that we could cover in another video. Suffice it to say, back in the 90s, it could take days for a new domain to propagate across the vast number of DNS servers on the internet. Today, it is just hours or less. Right. In fact, before 1973, every computer online kept its own complete listing of every other computer on the then pre-internet in a file called host.txt. As you might imagine, this caused numerous problems when names and numbers changed. Not everybody updated their own copy at the same time. So to make things easier, in 1974, Stanford University was basically appointed king of the internet and started keeping the master copy of this magical host.txt file. Every now and then, people online would grab an updated copy of the pre-internet directory from Stanford, and if you wanted to be added to the internet, you basically emailed Stanford and said, hey, you want to add me to that list. It wasn't until about a decade later that DNS would become a thing, 
though the host.txt file lives on today. Seriously, it's still on your computer right now. Go take a look. So this DNS architecture makes it so that not every DNS server on the internet needs to have the complete data set, because if they can't answer a client's question, they can always ask up the chain until an answer is found. In more recent time, hardware advances have meant that it's more affordable for a single server to have most, if not all, the answers. In this case, for the majority of queries, an answer can be given without needing to spend extra time asking up the chain. And therein lies why Cloudflare's 1.1.1.1 is supposedly faster than your ISP's default DNS server. Because for the majority of DNS queries you're going to ask, they've got the answer. Because they have spent a lot of money on a big server that can keep a ton of records and look them up super quick. And that's pretty much it. So as we've described, when your computer tries to pull up a web page, asking a DNS server for its IP address is only a very small part of browsing to that site. Once the DNS server gives your computer the answer, they're out of the loop, and it's up to that website to respond. So as you can see, a very fast alternative DNS server can, in effect, make your internet browsing faster, but only by a small margin. In the next video, we will look at the security aspects of DNS and a new technology that promises to make DNS queries secure without a whole lot of complication. So what do you think? Do you use an alternative DNS server? Let me know in the comments. And be sure to like, subscribe, and all that jazz. And if you want to support us directly and get cool custom-made hacking gear, check out our online store. Until next time, I am Shannon Morse. Trust your Technolust. Domain.com has all your website needs, from .com and .net domains to intuitive website builders so you can take that first step in creating your online identity. Let me tell you, there's no domain extension like a .com or a .net, or if you want to brand yourself, Domain.com has over 300 domain extensions like .club and .space. These guys are huge fans of Hack5. They're affordable, reliable. We've been using them for years. They've got all the tools you need to share your ideas with the world. And because they're such big fans, they are hooking you up with 15% off their already affordable prices. So get domain names and web hosting and email, and just be sure to use that coupon code HAK5. So when you think domain names, think domain.com.